Hi, do you want to build your own Revit template but you don't know where to start? Well, this is the tutorial for you. In this video, I show you four essential systems that I use in my template. Let's check it out. Welcome to Power Search, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. System 1 Project Browser Classification the project browser should read like a story for the project. Here on screen you can see the same plan presented in four different ways, each telling a different part of the story. As we move across to the project browser, the classification has been organized first by phase, then by project stage, and lastly by view type. So let's have a look at how that's been achieved. In a new project, all views are clustered together. On the Manage tab, find Project Parameters and click Add to start creating. Set the parameter type value as text and provide a name. Here, I will use Class to represent classification. Finally, select the corresponding category, which in this case is Views. Then repeat these steps to create the subclassification. Over on the Properties palette, the newly created parameters are listed. Find the Views arrangement at the top of the browser and right click to launch the Browser Organization tool. Then pick New to create a new classification system. Define your new classification with an appropriate name. Then from the Grouping and Sorting tab, specify the rules. These rules are the hierarchy your classification will be defined by, so the top should be the heading followed by the subclasses below. Here, I start with phase because I want a clear distinction between old and new works, and then I add the newly created project parameters in order. Be sure to make your new classification current by clicking the checkbox. The classification has been applied, but the values have not yet been associated with each view. Now I know that I want my primary classification to be headed by phase name. For this, I need a floor plan for each of the project stages, so I duplicate and rename the current view as required. With that now done, I can apply the phase parameter. You can now see the phase head is applied. Now start to define each view's classification values from the property palette and watch what happens to the browser as each value is applied. In this case I am using the class 1 parameter to determine my project stage and I'm using the class 2 parameter to define my view type. Adding a numerical prefix will enable Revit to list the stages in order. System 2 – Coloured Filters Colours are a great way to communicate design intent. Zooming in, you can see that equipment has been filtered by three colours. These colours represent the equipment's condition status in the final design. This counter, for example, is blue because it will be relocated to this new position. This table is a duck hair colour because it is a new item while this grey table is an existing item that will remain in its current position. These coloured filters are also driven by project parameters, specifically this one called Condition. Let's have a look at its properties. First of all, because it's equipment based, it has been applied to all of these categories. It is a text parameter, meaning the value is typed. Once the parameter is created, it can be used as a color filter through the visibility graphic overrides. As shown here, where I have created the filtering rule 
and specified the associated pattern solid color fill. Let's have a deeper look. Starting on the left, name the filter. Then moving to the center panel, specified the associated categories. And finally, on the right, set the rules. Here I have stated that for the rule to be true, the value must equal relock. This is case sensitive. Filters can also be applied to phases. Let's have a look at phase settings. This wall, for example, is grey because it was created in the existing phase. But this wall on the same view is white because it was modelled in the new construction phase. Let's have a deeper look at these overrides. A good place to start is the demolition plan, where the walls and the equipment are red because they've been demolished. On the Manage tab, find the Phases button. This is the Phase Control Center. Shown here are the key timestamps for this project. Above this are the filters and the graphic overrides for the filters. Each filter is controlled by a phase status, of which there are four. And if the status is true, these colors will be applied as an override. So here for the existing status, see the existing wall here. The override is an existing gray solid fill. And for the demolished items, the override is a solid red line. All of this comes together in the phase filters. Here I have nine filters. Let's take a look at number five as an example. This would show new items with no override and also demolished items which are overridden to red. Let me switch over to a 3D view to demonstrate the graphical implications of each of the nine filters. Keep in mind that these will be deployed from the new construction phase. Starting with phase one, this filter shows the previous phase, which in this case are the existing elements, and these have been overridden, and also shows the new elements to this phase. Filter 2 also shows the previous phase, and anything that has been demolished in the current phase. Filter 3 shows the completed design intent, while filter 4 shows only new elements to the new construction phase. So existing, demolished and temp items are all not displayed. Filter 5 shows demolished elements and new elements. However, only the demolished and temp items are overridden. But why do temp items need to be overridden? That's because this filter can also be used as an auditing tool. If an element is accidentally demolished in the wrong phase, it takes on temporary status, which has a blue override, making it easy to spot. Filter 6, the show previous filter, will show everything in the previous phase. So in this case, the existing elements minus anything that has been demolished. I have also included a couple of audit filters. These are used for other workflows, such as transferring phased models into new templates for which I have a tutorial. Click on the link on your screen to check it out. System 4 Shared Parameters These are the project parameters in the current project. We can also use shared parameters to schedule equipment. To demonstrate, I will create two schedules. These schedules will measure the storage capacity of the new design using the existing phase schedule to compare against. To do this, I need to create a parametric link between the shell family and my project. Revit calls this type of link a shared parameter. Let's unpack this workflow. Start by editing the family. Through the DiRoots Para Manager, we can create our shared parameters file. To do this, click on Shared Editor, where we can use the Add Parameter button to create multiple parameters at once. It is important to note this because way back at the beginning of the tutorial where we used Revit's native parameter creator, this was not possible. For my schedule, I need to measure the total length of the shelves in both millimeters and feet. So I will create two parameters to help. The first is called 
millimeter exact, which will be a length parameter. The second will be a multiplier to act as a counter. Now, I know Revit has a native counter parameter, but that's not compatible with formulas. So we can use this as a workaround. This will be an integer. To allocate these into groups, click the groups tab. Specify the desired name, then click create group. Then back at the parameters list, allocate each parameter as shown. Then check each of the created parameters with a tick and drag the mouse down to the bottom right corner and click save. We can now export each of these shared parameters into one inclusive text file. Now use the text file to push those parameters into the family. With that done, we can reload the family back into the project. Overwrite the existing version and its parameter values, and you can commence creating the schedule. Right click the schedule heading in the project browser and choose New Schedule. Choose Multi Category Schedule and check the phase is set to New Construction. Now notice the shared parameters have now been added into the project, and we can now add these to the schedule. To build the schedule, I need a few more parameters, so I add these also. I can now use these fields to create what Revit calls calculated values. These are values driven by formulas. And this is where the multiplier parameter becomes useful. Remember that I used this in place of the count parameter that Revit will not allow me to use in a formula. Moving ahead, I'm just creating some additional values that will be used in the schedule. The last calculated value that I need will help me convert millimetres into feet. To create this, I take the total millimetres and I multiply it by 1. With the fields finalised, we can commence filtering the schedule. To filter out the show family, I use family name. Moving across the tabs from left to right, the next one is sorting and grouping. Here we select grand totals and deselect itemize every instance because we want a single row. On the formatting tab, there is a bit more work. The multiplier parameter doesn't need to be seen in the schedule, so this can be hidden by checking this box. The total feet parameter, if you remember, was made from the total millimeter parameter. We can now format the units so that this reports in feet and then calculate the total for this parameter by changing the box to read calculate totals. And total millimeters should also have totals calculated. Let's see how that looks. On the properties palette, you will see that phase filters are also applicable to schedules. Here, I will set this to the previous and new filter. I can now make some final and minor edits to get to the completed schedule. To create a comparison schedule, I can duplicate the new schedule, rename it and change its phase setting to existing. And here is the completed comparison, which reports length in two different units. Well, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you found it interesting and that you learned something new. If you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. And I will see you in the next video.